Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, I'm here with two amazing Pittsburgh artists, Lenka Clayton and Alicia Wormsley, uh, whom I'll introduce fully in a moment. Um, first, I'll take this time to introduce myself and talk about Bunker Projects and the Bunker Review. Um, my name is Tara Fay, and I'm a conceptual artist and mother and curator. Um, I'm originally from Buffalo. I'm currently based in Pittsburgh and have been for quite some time. But without fail, I'm always compelled to mention being from Buffalo. Um, my practice functions as uh, continued exploration of black female subjectivity, language, selfhood, and especially now more than ever, self-preservation. Um, I'm a member of the Associated Artists of Pittsburgh, and I also serve on the board of Bunker Projects. And if you're not familiar, Bunker Projects is a nonprofit gallery and artist residency located in the Bloomfield Garfield area of Penn Avenue. September 2nd will be the opening of If the Grid Repeats, a solo exhibition by our current resident, Ava Conrad. Today's panel is brought to you by the Bunker Review. Um, in partnership with the City of Asylum. Bunker Review is Bunker Project's arts publication, and if you can, please consider donating to the review. Your support will ensure that we can keep creating programming like this, as well as publishing innovative critical writing and about contemporary art in Pittsburgh and beyond. If you'd like to donate, just visit our website, bunkerprojects.org, super easy to remember, or you can scan one of the QR codes placed around the space. QR codes are also available for those wishing to support Alicia Wormsley's Civil Shrine Organization or Lenka Clayton's An Artist Residency in Motherhood. So many ways to support everybody in all of the things. This panel will be followed by a 15 minute Q&A with the audience and a book signing. Books by each artist will be available for purchase at the front, and it's worth noting, our event will wrap up around five, just when 40 North's happy hour begins. So we'd love for you to stay, chat, and have a drink with us. Concerning today's panel, art is often characterized as a labor of love. Working artists are frequently challenged with professional precarity, yet expected to commit entirely to their craft. Grants, residencies, galleries, and museums support such cultural workers, but often overlook the unique needs of and demands faced by one important group, and that's parent artists. This afternoon, we're joined by two Pittsburgh-based mothers and working artists who have both created residencies that address the unique needs of parent artists in different ways. Ali I love that picture. It's one of my favorites. I look hard. Alicia B. Wormsley is an interdisciplinary artist and cultural producer. Wormsley's work contributes to the imagining of the future of art, science, and technology through the black woman lens. Alicia is a mother and founder of Sybil Shrine, an arts collective and residency program for black women, trans women, and femmes who are mothers and identify as artists, creatives, and activists. Most recent exhibitions include the Oakland Museum, VCU Arts, Qatar, okay, thank you, <laughs> South Bank Arts Center, Times Square Arts, and the Mattress Factory Museum. Wormsley's newest project, Dream, A Way to a Fram, with collaborator Lee Harris, was awarded a 2022 Guggenheim Fellowship. Congratulations again to Alicia. Lenka Clayton is an interdisciplinary artist whose work has been shown in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Solomon. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I was like, did I miss something? The Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum and the Carnegie Museum of Art. Clayton is also a mother and the founder of an artist residency in motherhood, a self-directed open source artist residency program that takes place inside the homes and lives of artists who are also parents. There are currently over a thousand artists in residence in 62 countries. In 2022, an artist residency in motherhood celebrates its 10 year anniversary. Thank you so much, Link and Alicia, again for joining us today. And a huge thank you to Alphabet City 
and the City of Asylum staff that has worked so hard to make this possible. So the first question, um, gosh, there's so many. I know. Take a break. Of course. Um, so how do you both define motherhood? Yeah, is that, is that said? Okay. Um, you know, I feel like uh, I actually, it's interesting that you asked because I actually had a really hard time um, uh, maybe around that, like what, how I define motherhood or like what being a mother means for me being a mother, you know? Um, I did have a really hard time with that and I kind of just like, maybe stop trying to define it, and that helped. Um, you know, I, I definitely feel like there's a lot of pressure on that word. Um, there's a lot of assumptions, like about gender and everything, like obligations and all of those things that are attached to that word. Um, so, you know, I, yeah, I just think like, uh, maybe a mother is like someone who cares for others, um, at the same time as caring for themselves. Um, uh, uh, yeah, what would I add to that? Um, <clears throat> so I think it comes up for me a little bit because I named my residency an artist residency in motherhood, um, <clears throat> but then I invite anybody to take part in that and I'm often sort of reached out to by people who are like I'm a fiction writer does that count as an artist I'm a grandparent does that count as a mother or you know and so and I always say yes so I think with with any word there's a million versions of what that can mean to people and I think you know just like what you're saying you always sort of open up to to whatever that is however people define it for themselves mm -hmm. I do love with both of your residencies how, you know, artist is so, it's such a broad title, right? right? And with Sybil Shrine in particular, I know so many women and femmes in Sybil Shrine within the cohort who may not even consider themselves artists, but right. you know, there's space to exist as so many different things that, you know, loosely fit under the definition of a creative. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that you both, you know, leave space for that. Um, so while we're talking about residencies now, what is a residency? Um, why would an artist want to attend a residency? And can you each speak about the opportunities and benefits that residencies as a whole provide? Which is a lot, I know. <laughs> you go first. Sure. Okay. Yeah, so, um, I mean, just very simply put, a residency, the idea behind a residency is that um, you have an opportunity to go somewhere outside of your everyday life. It's a kind of rarefied space um, with the idea that that's a sort of supremely creative opportunity. Um, it's normally somewhere very far away from where you're based and it's normally very selective. So you don't normally get to decide to do it. Somebody awards it to you or not. Um, so that's a kind of very traditional read of what a residency might be and um, for, for me, all of those things are fairly awful. <laughs> like the, idea, <laughs> the idea that there's sort of no creativity to be found in everyday life or that one has to travel in order to have, be allowed to have time and space to think or that one has to sort of sit around and wait to be selected by some amorphous others. Um, and mm -hmm. so um, for me specifically, the idea of an artist residency in motherhood is turning all of that on its head and sort of thinking how can people sort of empower themselves to create the supports that a residency traditionally offers, but within what we already have to hand and within the spaces that we inhabit on a daily basis. So it's a kind of sustainable and ongoing um, situation rather than some special little moment that passes and you can't ever get back to. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, yeah. I. Yeah, I'll just piggyback on that residency definition. And, you know, I think of, I guess I would think of a residency as like an excuse, <laughs> right? Like you have this like excuse to do, so, to be productive. You have this sort of, um, 
I don't know, a thing to aim for, you know, how how much time do you spend applying to residencies? Like, is that a residency? Is how much do you, you know, like just all of the, all of the um, sort of gatekeeping that goes with residencies? Um, yeah, and I think, I guess, um, not even talking about, I mean, a lot of those things happened in Sybil Shrine too. Like I, I uh, like it's so hard to think about alternatives like I was like this is gonna be alternative right like this is gonna be um, for anyone who considers themselves a mother whatever that definition is like we're you know it's gonna be for um, you know specific the only specific 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 how do you say that word specificity specificity the only you know what I'm saying is that they they should that they identify as black Right, like I'm thinking, like you can be creative in any way that you want. Like art is not like painting; it's not these specific specific things. Um, and and the residency should be, you know, for everyone. Like it shouldn't, you know. Like I hate that there's a call. I hate that there's like an application. I hate that there's a group of people who've never met someone and is deciding if their work has value from like a 500 word description. Um, all of those things are very hard to, like how do you figure out how to go a different way? Like how do we, you know, like can we just give everyone a residency? Can we just, you know, you start asking these questions and I, I think Lenka, Lenka has done a really good job of answering some of those things. Um, and we have two, but really a lot of it came out of the pandemic. Like we started the network residency for everyone. Like everyone gets a check if you just want to join. Like everyone gets this, you know, like we started thinking about it more broadly because of that. Um, so I kind of forget what the original question is, but um, residencies I think are, you know, have been like the gatekeeping that we're saying, like I think they just started to create space Right, like probably a residency was, you know, without even calling it that, it's just like, I'm gonna go here and dedicate this time to this. And so how do you kind of create that just in your mind? How do you, you know, like we can take that word residency and apply it in so many different ways that I think, um, you know, is more just like a freedom of language. Oh, that's great, um, both of you. Lenka, I'm, I'm curious, um, just because Alicia kind of mentioned um, how Civil Shrine had to function, you know, throughout the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I know that yours has always been sort of a remote, you know, you can do this from anywhere kind of functioning residency. Did you have to make any adjustments or did COVID affect anything? No, um, no. So, so when I set up um, the residency in motherhood, like you, like you said, it's. Um, it's essentially just a, a framework. So I did it myself to start with, and it came out of just personal necessity when I had my first child and was trying to work as an artist, and that sort of defined what the residency was. Um, and then over time, I published all of my work, and over time, um, people were emailing me saying, can I join the residency? And I was like, yes, but I didn't know how to share it, you know? Like, yes, you just put your set your mind in a certain direction, and then you can do it too. Um, so I made the... The websites kind of came out of people wanting to to join, and and so I just made a, a kind of roadmap um, about how to find a mentor for yourself, how to create space, how to how to sort of look at the particular struggles that one faces, which are of course different for everybody within being a mother and an artist, and to look at those as material to work out of. So I wrote a manifesto, and there are kind of points to support people. Um, and there's a world map that you get added to, so you can you see yourself, you're visible, and you get to see all of the other people around you. Um, and then you can print out the manifesto and put it on your wall, and you can make a, a sign for your studio. So all, there are all these things you can do, but they're all things that people do in their own homes and lives, um, and none of it's to do with me. So I have my, my sort of task is very simple. I get emails, I put people on the map, and I write and say congratulations and welcome. And, and that's the end. So it's this very, very simple thing that I do every day and I, I did throughout the pandemic. And, it, and it's very much about kind of empowering or prompting or provoking or mm -hmm. giving permission, if that's helpful, to people to sort of make it whatever they need it to be rather that, than something that people are 
having to take on. Yeah, so it, it was the same during COVID. Do they, do they submit, like, do you, so that's it. Like, there's no other, after you send the letter, uh -huh. there's no other, like, correspondence or check-ins or not with not with me so w when i designed the the residency i knew i wanted it to go on for as long as it was needed mm -hmm. um so it had to be completely sustainable yeah. and it had to be free because i didn't want to or i didn't feel like i would be able to do fundraising for mm -hmm. it indefinitely so so it's the like very very lightest touch so that it can just go on indefinitely right. whatever happens including global mm -hmm. pandemics um, but mm -hmm. because people are on the map there's a lot of stuff that goes on after it begins but it's between the people not okay. between them and me so yeah. um, like for example I was just talking to Stephanie earlier there's a lot of people in Los <coughs> Angeles um, for example and a lot of them meet up and have critique groups so you know where there happen to be groups of people there's like people who've like got joint nannies and set up studio buildings. There's all kinds right. of things happen, but it's way beyond, you know, it's the the ripples that connect them with other people rather than back to right. to me. That's awesome. And then I feel like I kind of know on your <laughs> end, but I would love to hear it again. I love hearing everything you have to say. So um, what prompted you both to begin these residencies and to have these for other mothers? Yeah, um, I uh, I actually had, my career was based on residencies. Like I went from residency to residency to residency for like um, 10 years before I had my kid. So, and I actually had like three residencies lined up when I found out I was pregnant. And when I told them, they were all like, oh, I guess you're not coming. Um, except for the one in France. They were like, oh, you're gonna have your baby here. Like very chill. And I was like, oh, but the two in the United States, they were like, I guess you're not coming, <laughs> you know? And I was like, I'm not, you know? So that was <laughs> where I had to be like, you know, and then I was just kind of like, you know, beyond the like, oh shit of having a baby in gym <laughs> the first place. Then I was like, you know, like, what am I gonna do? Like, how am I gonna uh, be an artist? I didn't exactly know how, you know, like my pretty much my entire career, a professional art career was residencies. So I just was really kind of like, um, like, okay, let me figure this out. And, and um, I was really inspired by Linka's project and just like deciding like, oh, okay, this is something I could do too. And I started thinking about it. Um, I just started really, you know, like you just become, it becomes like a major part of your life, right? Like be, when you become a, like have a child. And so I just um, started, you know, was like really paying attention. Like I started just seeing things, like I'm very observant. So I just started seeing how mothers are treated in a broader scope, not just through art, but everywhere. I started thinking about like all of the single moms in my life, like my mom, and I started thinking about you know, I just started paying attention, like, more, like, and then people, like, once you put something out there, you know, it starts coming to you. It's just, like, law of attraction or whatever. So I'm just, like, thinking about this, and people started telling me all these stories. Like, I remember I was here, and a couple, I was just saying, like, everything's crazy. Like, and also I had a little bit, not, I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't call it postpartum. Like, I didn't have the um, postpartum depression, but I definitely was, like, going through a huge transition of like, what is my life, you know? Um, and so I remember I was talking about it on a panel sitting right here. I was sitting in this exact seat on a panel, like with Vanessa Jervin and someone else. And I was like, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I don't know, you know, I was just kind of like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like I just had my child. I think Shepard was like strapped to me. And, um, and this couple came up to me and they were like, oh my gosh, you're so right what you said about like how mothers are treated. And we, two lawyers, a couple, two lawyers, the, um, <coughs> the uh, woman decided to stay at home. She would take, she would be a stay at home mom. She like, you know, quit her job as a lawyer and, and the dad was still out lawyering. And um, they, she got into a bike accident. And they, when they went to, so he had to stay home with the kids 
And when they went to claim on the insurance, there was no value to being a mother. Like they couldn't get any money like from their insurance company to like support because there was no value. Like she wasn't missing work, yeah. you know, like things like that. Like people started telling me things like that. Like, like um, just because I was open to it because that, that was my experience. And I, so I just started hearing all those things and I was like, this is some bullshit. Like, so, so that's why you know, I started really thinking about it. it was that, and then also the billboard thing happened and we got funding to do this residency, uh, give out many grants for the billboard. So I knew that there was money, right? Like, because I, you know, I didn't even ask for that, necessarily ask for that funding. Like, it presented itself to me, you know? And I, I was like, and it changed my mind, it changed like the way I think about money also. And I was like, oh, there's plenty of money. Then there was like this study done for black mothers, like where Pittsburgh is like the worst city <laughs> to be a black mother. So then I was like, oh, well, here's the research already done for me. And then I just, um, so then I knew, and I knew I could, I could pull this off, basically. So then I just started dreaming really big and I got um, Jessica Moss to help me and we just started dreaming together and, and made this idea um, with the Office of Public Arts help. So yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Is should I repeat the question? the question? Basically, what <laughs> was the motivation? Oh, <laughs> no, it was great. It was fine, I'm captivated. <laughs> Um, what was motivation. the motivation behind you starting your residency? Yeah, um, I think I, I said a little bit, but um, I'll elaborate on it. I had my son mm -hmm. so um, in 2011, so he's 11 now. Um, before that, I hadn't thought about it, really, honestly. And then having him kind of really um, naively just made a lot of things very clear. Everything you described is very familiar. Um, and just sort of made very clear like sexism that was all around me and expectations both within myself and outside um, within society about what it meant to be a mother and what that meant for, for my life and how I had to behave now. And, and I just sort of been blissfully ignorant or just hadn't been thinking about them before. And so it was a real, it really was like a sort of massive shock and people, my peers at the time um, started sort of, two of them said things like, well, um, so now you're having a baby, so all your work's going to be about babies, like some sort of very patronizing thing. And then someone else sort of made a point about, well, are you going to, like, I thought you were a really serious artist, and how are you going to, you know, if you have a kid? So there's just this sort of inherent expectation that if I really cared a lot about making my work, which I do, by the way, um, but that th then I would choose not to have children, that I owed that to art. And then vice versa, this other idea that, if I was going to be a good parent, then I owed it to him to to sort of not pursue this thing, which wasn't making much money and was insecure and all those other situations. So, and I just found that sort of horrific. I just found that like a very horror. Nobody was saying to my to the kid's dad. No one was saying any of those things to right. him. Like that was right. just sort of unspoken. And so I just sort of became aware of that. And it was and at first I just became very angry about it. So it was kind of just an internal sort of anger and I think just starting to acknowledge it in myself, like to talk to people about it and to be open about it, um, sort of led to it becoming part of my art practice and actually the first piece was with, I don't know if you remember Dan Byers, a uh, curator from the Carnegie, yeah so he, he was a wonderful curator from the Carnegie and he had when I was pregnant he'd invited me to do a, um, a project at the Carnegie International and I didn't, I felt so sort of weird about being a parent, I didn't tell him I was pregnant and and he was like, it's going to open. And I was like, I was thinking, like, that's when Otto's going to be eight days old. And I was like, sure, I'll take part, you know, sort of thinking, like, you know, is that even possible? Um, and it really changed my work. So I started realizing all this sort of fear and, you know, the sort of imbalance and the unknown started to define that project. Um, and it ended up being, it was called Maternity Leave, and it was a, a baby monitor in the middle of the Carnegie Museum that was live linked to the nursery at home. 
So you could hear me not being there and you could hear Otto crying and it was like a live sort of audio link. Um, anyway, so that was kind of the beginning of it and it was really just, like you said, Alicia, just sort of allowing the uncertainty or the questions or the discomfort to be part of how I interacted with the world rather than something I had to like solve or digest alone, you know? Um, and a lot of people, women and men, uh, were telling me, don't tell like curators that you have a baby. Like right. there was this, this just incredible, like yeah. ridiculous advice, which seems like, I don't know, a hundred years ago, but like I was given no, the advice. It was not a hundred years ago, but I, I was like really yeah. shocked. Um, and I think also like I had, I was like Googling artist, parent, how do you do it sort of thing. And at the time, you know, 11 years ago, there was very little. I'm so glad that's not the case now. Um, but there was very little, and one thing that kept coming up was a piece by Mary Kelly, um, postpartum document, yeah. where she kind of studied her kid, and that was made before I was born, you know? So I was like, where is everything else? Like, what's 40 <laughs> years of people making art and having parents, where is that? And the answer is, it was just like not shared for, yeah. for whatever reason. So anyway, those are the reasons that I started the residency. Um, to keep working. Initially, it was just very selfish. I, you know, I just, I had a problem. I, I was like, I have a kid, I want to make work. I'm with them all the time, I have no money. Like, how do I make a little bit of a frame to work within? Um, and it just sort of began as a personal project. Um, and then, as I said before, when people sort of wanted to do it, I opened it up as a thing to sort of guide other people to, to do it for themselves. I think it's interesting that you mentioned the idea of sort of um, being naive maybe about uh, capacity with parenting, right? Um, and I feel like in my own experience, I was very naive because I, I came into a creative practice and I was motivated by being a mother. And I'm like, you know, I want to be creative. I want to do great things. I want my kids to be proud of me. I want to create channels of access and opportunity for them. And then I had heard for years, Alicia, probably about you more than anyone else, and Sean kept saying, like, you have to meet Alicia. You guys are really going to like each other. Like, she does all these amazing things, and she's a mom. And, you know, this idea that, like, you know, black women can do it all. We do all of the things out of necessity for the sake of survival. So I thought, you know, I can manage a creative practice and be a mother and do all of the things. And it still shocks me to this day. Intense. Like having all that fear, like no one really told me that was going to happen, <laughs> you know, that I was going to be so afraid, you know, and so I had to, and I never, I think before, like I've, I have never been a feel fearful person. Like I didn't even know, like I, for a while, like when I said I, it wasn't necessarily like postpartum, but I just was like, what is going on, you know, where I, I think that was a thing where like I, I didn't even know like I was like what is this ho this discomfort like I didn't even know like it like to call it fear like it took me like probably like a year of therapy to be like oh I was really afraid right so that I'm not as afraid I'm more emotional like I could cry at any second since I've had my kid I like never cried before I had a kid I like just was so hard, <laughs> you know, like, and like, as soon as I had Shepard, I was just like, all the, all the tears, like, which aren't a bad thing. Like, it's not like I'm crying because I'm sad or afraid or all of those things. It's just all of those, like, I just feel everything more or I, I allow myself to feel everything more. So I think that's, um, but I think so many things like, just there are so many benefits to you know the biggest one is like are my kids right like they're awesome and um and my family and like I'm lear I learned so much I think my practice has gotten so much better you know and maybe that's age and but um I have like one thing I with the fear like the whole like one thing I was like just had to learn to like trust, like get out of my kid's way, right? And get out of my own way. And I think that like has expand, has become expansive for me in everything, right? Like to just chill. So that, and like feel what I'm feeling, like not like stop myself from feeling a certain way or being upset or 
all of those things that I did. Like I was managing myself a lot and everything around me. And when you have a kid, like you have no control over anything. <laughs> so that I think, and so I think that like, ex like helped my practice too. Like, like I don't expect to control things or, um, yeah. Like even the way that people saw me, like a lot of the things that Linka was saying about curators saying, don't tell people you have kids. Like so many people said that to me, like, oh, just don't tell them. Yeah. Like when I told them about the residencies, like, oh, you should have just showed up. You don't tell people like you don't, you know, like people told me that like, oh, don't say anything or don't, you know, I, I was um, supposed to go to like I got invited when I was pregnant to go to the um, Venice Biennale and like do this project with my collaborator Lee Harris and she was like, we just won't tell them like you'll and I was like, I'm not going like I there's just no way that's even going to happen like and I had to. And it was like so stressful and so scary for me. Like I just was, but I'm, you know, like now in hindsight, like, oh, that was perfect. Like everything changed for a reason. You know, like I, I started making work. I never, I was like, um, never thought I would make before I had a kid. And like, so I just think that um, there are challenges and like, but it's just, I think better. Yeah. I I remember feeling conflicted because I thought that, you know, being a mom was secondary to whatever other identities I have and whatever other things I have going on in my life. And then coming into my practice and developing more of a practice and defining my practice, I realized that like being a mother is very much a part of that because I probably would not have pursued a creative practice in the same way that I have been you know, without being a mother. So it's in my bio, it's like on all my socials, like yeah. everyone knows like you, you may not see my kids, you know, interacting with me just virtually, but that's because they choose, they don't wanna be, they tell me all the time, like don't <laughs> post this on Twitter or Instagram. So like, you know, you may not see my kids, but they're there, right. they're very much a part of everything I do. But I wonder how many times I've been turned down by things or right. you know for opportunities because like I'm like yes I'm a mother I'm a mother artist I have two children so that's really interesting because I, I hadn't considered that um, mm -hmm. how do your children influence your creative practices uh, like in every way you know there's such like a huge part of my sorry there's such a huge part of my life that you know um, uh, and I'm very attached to them so that's that's like a thing I think like my mom was so much more chill than I am like I just was raised by you know my mom would be like okay you're staying at your grandma's I'll see you guys later <laughs> like just you know and not that you know that's just like the kind of person she is like we're just different people but um and you know like my mom's awesome like she's the best mom but that like we just have a different vibe but um but yeah they just influence everything like I I um, you know, make work with them in the room, you know? So like, that's like, I don't have, I don't have a studio. So my dining room is my studio. So, um, you know, if we're, if I'm going somewhere to do a project, they usually come with me, um, and are a part of it. They're, uh, like I, t I show them what I'm making. Like, what do you think about this? Do they you like know? it? Do your kids like your work? No. <laughs> Not always. My kids do not like my work. My, my son quite likes the video I made of him running away from me when he was one. It's like, I like that video. The rest of it, Freedom. it doesn't, yeah, the rest of it doesn't, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter. Which I think is healthy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Emile, who's 13, is my stepdaughter. She doesn't care, like, like, she doesn't care what I do. Like, she's just like, I'm like, look at this, I made, you know, like, and she's like, that's cool. You know, like neon, like the Sybil Shrine piece. So I, oh. I for the Sybil Shrine <laughs> exhibition at the Thanks, Mattress neon. Factory, which is still up. If you haven't <laughs> seen it, you have to go see it. But um, I was fortunate enough to be a part of a satellite exhibition with um, two other artists, and our art was showcased like digitally, like all over the city. And I did a photograph with my daughter that I staged at uh, Chautauqua School of Art during a residency there. 
And she was excited because she's like, all these people are going to see I'm going to be famous. Uh -huh. But past that, she wasn't like impressed by the work. It was like, like I had this idea for staging, and my kids, they hung in there, they did it, they got it done. I'm like, listen, we just need one good shot, and then you guys can just like go play in the lake. So I do appreciate that. Um, yeah. But yes, I say all that to say, go see the Sybil Shrine exhibition at the Mattress Factory. Yeah. Lenga, did you want to speak to more about how your children influence your practice? Um, I, I mean, it's a, I'm, it's a very similar. <laughs> there, it's, it would be hard to say how they don't influence right. every single thing that happens. I mean, my, um, yeah, I, I, they're, they're very foundational to everything. Yeah. That's a nice way to put it. Um, there are so many questions. I'm just trying to, OK. Here's a good one. What could new forms of parenthood and practice look like for artists in the future? And what do you both envision for that? Um, do you mind? No, please. So, I mean, I don't know the answer to that question, but um, from the start, one of, the, one of my kind of big hopes for an artist residency in motherhood was that it would become like completely obsolete, that there would be a point where people yeah. become pregnant or, or have kids, however, um, and they want to have a creative practice and they wouldn't be sort of thrown by society's expectations that so they shouldn't or couldn't do that. Um, so anything it takes for future generations of mothers to not feel like that's even a question. Yeah, I agree uh, 100%. I, uh, like even with like Simple Shrine, I just, we, like have it on a free like all of our right all of our planning and grants are on a f in a folder a google folder that anyone can see like we like you can look on the website and it's there so if you want to start a civil shrine it wherever you are like it's that's great for everybody um because it should be obsolete like mm -hmm. it shouldn't be needed right it should be like where we're just hanging out um so I, yeah, that's important. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, that it's not a big deal that we, that you have a family and a practice. Mm -hmm. Like that it shouldn't even be, you know, like it sucks that we're, we have to have this conversation. <laughs> like it should just be like, oh, this is how life is, right? Like we have children, we have, we create things. We, I mean, ev most people, right contribute to this world and society and humanity and our parents <laughs> so it's like right. parenting maybe not parents but our parenting in mm -hmm. some way so it's not it's really not that big of a deal but it is a huge deal in the same sense so kind of like uh parenting in general can you both speak to the importance of um community and mentorship and this can be in the context of residencies or just in general. I'm curious to hear your personal thoughts on both. Um, I think, wait, say that again. Give me the question just one the more time. Just the importance of community and community mentorship. And mentorship. Yeah, I mean, crucial, right, to not feel like you're the only person that's going through this. That is just a human necessity. Um, and I community like we have to restructure our communities um over so often right to allow for this expansion like this evolving that's happening um or re revolving <laughs> um so i think uh you know just even how deep like to break these like extremely deeply rooted conditioned ideas and expectations about motherhood about having a family of like where people are saying you know like i i've been invited to residencies like i didn't even apply for them i was invited to them and i would be like okay well i'm bringing my kid and they're like oh we can't accommodate that mm -hmm. right and like one you invited me <laughs> you know like <laughs> and two the person who's telling me this is a mom mm -hmm. Right? So that, isn't that crazy that like... That happened to me the other day. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like we're, like you're, you know, and 
in one case, I will say that this mother, one, I, I'll like shout her out, uh, Fount Fountainhead Arts in Miami. I like told her, I was like, why can't I, you know, you're giving me an apartment. Like I just had this whole talk with her and she was like, wow. You know, and she just started, she, she like texted me at like two in the morning, like, I'm so sorry. Like I <laughs> did not, you know, like I didn't even think about this. Like we, we haven't had this issue before. Like I'm a mother, I should know better than this. Like, and started a residency for moms, like added it to her programming. That's so cool. like there is, you know, but that like, I didn't even think about it and I'm a mother. Right, yeah. like because we're conditioned and and like and that. So I think, like that commute, like for me, that's what community means. Like being able to like say like this is my experience, and then people are supportive and like mm -hmm. are saying like me too, or like let's let's change this or do something different or create these residencies like um, or these spaces. So. Yeah, and mentorship is um, also, I think, you know, like an integral part of residencies is like, I mean, I think that's a big part of why residencies are so awesome because you go to a place and there's all these other people who are doing similar things to you or trying to sustain themselves in a similar way. And you make these connections and you meet people who, you know, are in different places in their practice or whatever and, and you can like come, you know, learn from each other and, and, um, and that is, you know, like there's so many things like I had the first person who I, I was an assistant for and I babysat for her newborn baby, Ellen Sebastian Chang. She's a director in San Francisco. I was going to school there and I, um, and she like had had her first child at 42 years old and she was like a successful director and like in this whole practice and she taught me so many things. And like she also went through all of these things, you know, so I'm like 20 years old working for her and seeing how she negotiates, doesn't negotiate her space and time and how people, you know, she would go to uh, rehearsals with her baby, you know, um, strapped to her like she is not changing for anybody and so when I saw that and she even told me she was like I make it a point to take Sinem to all of these places like because of the way people act so they have to be broken from that <laughs> so I'm gonna do that so I will you know so then when I had Shepard I said the same like I was like absolutely that's what I'm gonna do like took him to every meeting every you know all of those things so so mentorship, I think, is so important. And, you know, even me seeing what Lenka was doing, like, was like, oh, okay, I can do this too. Like, you know, like that kind of community isn't, I think, is crucial. Um, and mentorship is crucial. That's cool. Um, I think also um, a thing that's really important is, is, is accountability. So the things I've sort of heard from the people, because I work as a mentor, kind of separately to the residency in motherhood, but with often with people who are also doing the residency in motherhood. And what I hear from so many people is that accountability is so important because parenting has, there are so many very direct needs, like I am filthy, I am starving, you know, and it's like one after the next all the time. And if there's, and then it's so much more sort of amorphous and ephemeral, the sort of needs of your creative self and what one might do for themselves. I mean, so having sort of accountability and visibility helps those remain important and visible to yourself and the people around you. Um, and I've heard that so much that like the accountability, whether it's from having a mentor, having an amazing role model, or like having a community of similar people around you just sort of makes you remember that that's an important need too, even though it's sort of more ephemeral than a lot of the parenting mm -hmm. needs. What are some of your favorite outcomes in terms of your residencies? And this could be based on like maybe feedback you've gotten from artists, um, a measure of success for artists that have participated in your residencies. And you know, what's, what's ideal for you in terms of what artists can get from the opportunities that you're both creating? Um, for, for me, um, one of my favorite outcomes is that it's continued. Um, I mean, as I said, I would love it to be obsolete, but it's certainly still needed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your project's definitely still needed, obviously. Um, but I think the fact that it's it's sort of so much 
bigger than me. It started off as this project I did for myself, and it's gone so much further than any network I could have dreamt of, and now it's in 79 countries. Um, and that's just, to me, so beautiful and mind-blowing that there's something so simple, and I certainly recognized it as a person living in the States, um, that it was an issue for me, but that it could sort of affect someone in Finland or Kenya or Kazakhstan, or like that there's, that there's sort of a, a core to something that we all struggle with, which is so translatable around the, the globe. Um, it's just incredibly meaningful to me. Um, and so when I get emails from people and I like add them onto the world map, every time I do that, that's like a really exciting moment for me. Yeah, I just, um, I don't know, everything about it uh, is really, makes me feel good. Like even when something goes wrong, I still feel really good about Sybil Shrine. I'm, I'm also like, um, like us, you said like, uh, it was completely selfish at first. And I, that's like the best art. Like <laughs> you have to like be really selfish, like selfishly Sybil Shrine, like, I wanted to be connected to all of these women. Like I wanted to start this community. Um, this community existed and already existed. And, um, and I had, you know, and I felt a part of it in different spaces, like with different people. But like I wanted to bring it together in this way, like selfishly, like I, I made Sybil Shrine because this is what, like, let me dream, like, what's my dream residency, you know, like, and, and that's what I tried to make, and, and, um, and, you know, and the challenge there is that, like, what's a dream for me might not be a dream for somebody else, or, you know, like, but we're, you know, close, like, the dream's flexible, right, like, it can adapt, it can change, like, God has changed, so, we, um, so I think that like we're in the process of like adapting, like we, we did this. Um, and I think this is, I really love that we can like see it and then say like, oh, and, and when, I, when I made it, I also was like, I don't wanna be in charge of this. I don't wanna like, I want someone else to, I want maybe like every three years, a new person takes, you know, like is like the leader or whatever the, the creative director, but um, like how can I make this as like com communal? Like can it be a coll collective? Can it be this, you know, like, and I think that's really exciting to me to like, to, um, I've been doing a lot of research on collectives, um, thinking about how Sybil Shrine might adapt and change to some of those things. And that is super um, like really, ex it's like incredible to see what collectives people have made. It's it's incredible to see like how we create community, how we like um, break down capitalism and how we break down like all of these things that are forced upon us. Um, it's super inspiring. I love that. I love the idea of being selfish. I feel like sometimes <laughs> it's very necessary. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. Yeah. But I think about, you know, maybe how much better off my mom would have been if she had been selfish, right? Instead yeah. of like living for her children and, you know, not having a life outside of just being a stay at home mom. Right. So I think in the context of parenting, sometimes for the health and well being of our own, like we have to be selfish. And I think creative practices and like being artists, there's, some vanity in that like most artists are vain but i'm also a gemini so i don't know that could be <laughs> why i feel that way real talk um so i i do want to leave space for a q a so i think yeah. my last question would be um what's next for your work what do you have coming up what's going on i'm trying to do le less i'm trying to do the <laughs> least I like i just um i actually have i do have a exhibition um opening q foundation new york on september 15th but after that i'm i'm like not doing anything so this so you can so all support nice. me in that by not asking me to do anything <laughs> or you can all contribute uh, <laughs> i love that yeah. i've set aside april 
next year, like a month of like seriously not doing things. I'm doing too much at the moment. That's why this is like delightful to me. Yeah. Yes, um, we have a we have a project opening in Troy Hill, which is just up the road, two miles away. And um, my my husband Philip Andrew Lewis and I are building a um, we've built a lighthouse inside a row house, and it's going to be it's called Dark House Lighthouse, and it's a permanently permanent piece of public art that will be open for free um, from September the 25th awesome. and and uh, and then we have a gallery also in it's very Troy Hill based um, mm. we have a gallery called gallery closed um, where the idea is you can never go in it it removes all of the usual barriers like snooty receptionists like dress policy um, that are normally inherent in going to a gallery and it's just you can only look through two street front windows you can go at two in the morning, the lights are always on, you can wear your pajamas. Um, and we're just coming <laughs> to the end of our first show um, that shows 27 international artists. Um, so that's, go and see that. Uh, a couple of other things. We have a show at the Mattress Factory opening um, next March 23rd, I think. Yeah. Awesome. That's that. Yeah, thanks so Thanks for yeah, thank you asking us questions. Yeah. No, of course. Thank, thank you, you for um, sharing so much of yourselves and your creative practices. Um, does anyone have any questions for Lanko or Alicia? Uh, if you do have a question, please raise your hand, and I'll be around with a microphone. And if we get any questions from the online audience, I will relay them. No, nothing at all. <laughs> That's OK. <laughs> Hi, um, I have a question. Can any of you, including you, Tara, speak to um, some things that residencies could do to accommodate artists with children to make you feel like, oh, I really, I feel welcome coming here? I mean, there's some sort of obvious things. So ask if people have kids. And if they're going to need or want to bring them, provide childcare. Um, just make space for that to be a sort of interesting, normal part of creating a cohort rather than a sort of pain that has to be accommodated. Yeah. And anything else? Yeah, I, that's a good, those are good things. <laughs> I think, yeah, just being down, like, it, it really is not that hard to just, like, be welcoming and and just like understand yeah. that everyone's different and everyone has different things going on. And so bringing your child or children or a partner, you know, like all of those things could happen. I know a lot of residencies, there's like shared space, right, with other people and like mm -hmm. all of those things. But um, then just make it, you know, just make it so like it's families, one this time or like it's I just don't think it's that hard to change mm -hmm. like it's not that hard it's really just your mind right it's really just how you think about things I think you can easily say like of course you can bring your child here of course you can bring your children here of course like like you just there's just like all of this like kind of structural gatekeeping that happens that is ingrained in us and if you really were like why am I saying no to that you, like, if you just ask yourself that question, <laughs> you probably would say yes. Yeah, um, my resident experience, I think accessibility is a big thing. I went into a residency and, you know, I had applied talking about my practice in the context of being a mother. I remember my portfolio had work that I made with my children. So coming into that, it's like there was this awareness that I was a parent. And then when I talked through pain points and issues I was having, securing residencies that are supportive of parents, it was just so strange to even be having these conversations during critiques because it's like this institution is a great example of a residency that very well could support parents and has the resources to do so and they're choosing not to. And at this residency, I remember people saying like, oh, well, do you know about Lenka Clayton? She's in Pittsburgh too, you know, she has a residency. And it's like, it's great that you have this knowledge to share, but also like, what are you doing to be more accommodating? <laughs> yeah, why, why is like, it Like, it's, it's so weird and then it makes <laughs> it feel like, yeah, Lenka would do it. Yeah, it's like the responsibility <laughs> lies so much on me as an artist and then even in yeah, terms of my true. partner and my children visiting, it was so difficult and there were so many channels they had to go through it's not like they could just drive into the residency and I could see them it was very it was 
gatekeeping, like literally, and in the sense of like how we also talk about gatekeeping in the arts. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. If you know you have a parent coming into the residency, just like have consideration for the fact that, you know, I have a life outside of what I'm doing here, and although I am appreciative for the opportunity, I, I would like there to be some consideration for the fact that I am mothering. And, you know, during this six week stay, I'm not even with my kids. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think not, and also just not directing all of this at women, you know, so just because, because, you know, there are probably most, many, many people who have been on those residencies were parents, but didn't have to talk about it. And so just sort of opening it up to be a normal part of, you know, the questioning and supports that you offer all kinds of artists or genders of artists. Does anyone else have a question? No question is too silly. Yes. <laughs> Alicia, I think you talked about the work you make, you've made after having children being like not work you would have made beforehand. And, and I think maybe in one of the examples, it was um, actually dealing with motherhood and, and things like that. But I was wondering to hear from all of you how your work has differed and maybe that's because the practice has changed or the content has changed and like or other kind of examples of of differences and or maybe you've approached things that you wouldn't have in a in a different kind of context so I was just kind of curious if you could talk more about that Tara did you want to Oh um as far as work being different like after I had children I, I wasn't even an artist until I had children. I, I had had a curatorial practice, which I maintained like probably shortly after having my first daughter. And then um, my issues with that are, you know, there's very little art admin support. So in terms of, you know, curating shows, it, it felt like asking artists to contribute to what's essentially my vision with very little return. Like, I couldn't guarantee the work would sell. I didn't always have the money to pay them. And over time, I was like, this can't be it. Like, I have things I want to express. Like, how can I do it? And then it, it sort of transitioned into more of a creative practice, primarily, um, you know, performance art. And then some of the work I did was rooted in, like, uh, I, I did a performance piece about my relationship with my daughter and, you know, her father being white and her being white passing and, you know, racial dynamics and things that come into play in, in the context of, uh, like, a lineage versus ethnicity and optics versus ethnicity. So I realized that there were parts of my life with my children that were sort of trickling into my work and I, I wanted there to be more of a focus on my relationship with my kids and my work is very identity based like I'm always pulling from my own lived experiences to create work and my my greatest lived experience is being a mother to my two unbelievably incredible children so yeah, exploring that relationship and the transition of that relationship as my children grow into you know their own people that exist outside of myself. That's something I do want to continue to explore, which is challenging because they also don't care about my work, <laughs> don't necessarily want to be a part of anything. So it's like you know we'll get there in time ideally. But yeah, so yeah, I, I don't know. I hope that gave you something. <laughs> um, I think. Like a, a huge thing that changed for me personally was, I think before I had kids, I had a lot of, um, which I'm sure it's, I'm not the only person, but I had a lot of like, oh, I'll go to the studio in a minute. First, I'm going to, whatever, procrastinate <laughs> with something else. Um, and it was, you know, like the normal sort of doubt or whatever, like that kind of thing. And then I had kids and I was their main caregiver for most of their young years. And I had like zero time and no mental space. And I was like desperate to go in the studio. And the studio kind of transitioned from something that I like ought to be doing to something where I was like, I really need to do that. Like I want to do this, and I need to do this and it helps me. And it just sort of embedded that more deeply in my um, experience. And so as they've got older, that I've sort of centralized being an artist or making an art, uh, making an art, making art um, into the sort of core of like how I spend my time. So that's been a that's been a sort of gradual shift. Um, and then I think, as I mentioned, um, 
once I became pregnant, I hadn't really planned for that to, to do the residency in motherhood or for that to affect my work so much. It just did because it couldn't not. Um, and so I think there was a kind of uh, honesty which I hadn't thought about before. Like I, I was sort of opening up to allow things that were actually quite personal experiences to become something public because I felt like they needed to be talked about and I was all, and I sort of realized I had to put myself on the line personally in order to have those conversations um, and that was something I wouldn't have dreamt of doing before my work and life had felt I'd been able to keep them more separate and so I think that that just sort of having kids just smash them together in in one space in a way that I'm ultimately grateful for but it was quite a transition yeah I um, I kind of like always like my practice has very consistently been making things with the people around me right like whether that's my family or my friends or you know um, uh, you know like my like longest collaborator Lee Harris we met in Brooklyn we were like in our t early 20s and we just started playing in the park you know like so like I kind of just like you know and wherever I went I would just like make things with people around me so having Shepard you know like um well even before that like Emile became part of my life when she was three and and we started I just started making things with her you know, so and then Shepard, like making things with them both. And and so it just made, you know, like so in that way, it, it's just like another person that I'm making things with. I think the one thing like as far as um, one change that happened is like where, right? Like so I had been traveling and like doing residencies and doing all of those things um, pretty nonstop. Um, and so that like that was like one thing where I was like in one place, right? Like, so I think that's, you know, that's where I'm like, okay, um, I had, you know, and even though like I, we do travel, like I do travel with them and without them, I, it's still like most of my time is here and like, it's not going to change. Like I, you know, like, so that I think changed my practice a lot. So I'm really, I think, you know, in that way. And then also, um, like the things I used. So I was like more building things, using toxic materials, doing <laughs> like all of this stuff, which shouldn't be doing anyway, but like that's what I was um, working with or, um, and, and so I started like sewing, right? Like I started, like the materials changed. I started, um, uh, like stopped using resins and like things like that I, and because I work in my house so I started like um, just as far as materials and that even um, yeah so I think just like practically that's like one thing that really changed because of that um, and then uh, yeah that's that's it Well, should we wrap up? Are there no more questions? Is there a website or anything? Oh, like how do people? Oh, just my uh, aliciabwormsley.com or sybilshrine.com. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and the residency in motherhood is an, an artist residency in motherhood.com. So if you know people who need support, oh, yeah. <laughs> like just feel free to share them. Yeah, Sybil Shrine, we have an open network. So the network, you can join at any time. And, and there's support and groups that meet and different things. And you get, like, um, if you know anyone that wants to join, you also get, like, free classes at the Glass Center. And, like, you get some perks. So so if you know anyone that needs to, that wants to join. And please visit the Shrine exhibition at the Mattress Factory. Yeah, visit Gallery Closed in Troy Hill. I still haven't been able to go, but I keep up with things oh, on social media. Thanks. But I live on the east now, so Troy Hill feels so far. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's so it's close anytime. to here. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah, true. Yeah. And please support Bunker Projects, the Bunker Review. Um, we always have amazing things going on and, you know, different residents coming in at all times. So, yeah, don't forget about the QR code.
Oh, and the books. You can buy Lenka and Alicia's <laughs> books, and they'll be yeah. signed. So you should take advantage of that. Because once things are out of print, artist books get so expensive. So you should just take advantage now while you can. Um, we do have one question that snuck in from the online audience. Okay. We had a little bit of technical difficulties in the middle, and they uh, are asking if you could repeat. Uh, you were telling a story about um, something that shocks you to this day. Huh. Who was? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm shocked at how challenging it is to you know, navigate as an artist and a mother. And I think what I didn't say then was that I, I also, I have to maintain a full-time job. I have a partner, but we live separately. So all of my bills and my rent, I am solely responsible for. So there's that too. And that uh, also really gets in the way of my ability to maintain residencies. When I did a residency and I you know, was away from my kids, I was also working two jobs remotely. And um, you know, I have a regular, yeah, I have a regular nine to five. So I think there's an additional layer of challenging. But again, you know, you hear like, oh, you can do it all, you can do everything, and it's like, yeah, but I also want to live a healthy life and be like a healthy, you know, parent. So yeah, that was essentially what the the shock was rooted in—the idea that it's actually not that easy, and you will struggle. And sometimes, when you struggle, people won't care and they won't make accommodations for you. Mm -hmm. Would it be okay if I just share a little bit about what that book is? Yes, absolutely. Please. Is it please. Okay? Um, it's very cute. So it, thanks, what Brett Yasko, Pittsburgh amazing designer, designed it. Um, so it's it's called Mother's Days, and it was made by. Um, 81 members of an artist residency in motherhood. So sometimes we collectively make work together. Um, and I invited all of the residents to, to write an account of what happened on a very specific day, which was the 15th of July, 2019, which feels like a million years ago now. Um, and it was just a norm, normal Monday. Um, and I just invited people to, to not editorialize, but just kind of to report what happened from midnight to midnight over the course of 24 hours in their lives. Um, and it's like a kind of groundhog day. So it's like one day after the next, after <laughs> the next. Um, there are 81 people in 19 different countries. And I think the, what the awesome. pers one person has six kids, like someone's pregnant, and then it's every sort of amount of children in between and people yeah. from all walks of life. Um, so I just wanted to mention that it's not a book about my work. It's like a residency and motherhood collection. So feel free to flick through it if you're Oh, curious. thank you for clearing that up. I wasn't yeah. clear on that either, but my point still remains. Five years from now, you don't want to regret not getting this book. That's true. <laughs> um, I have this book here, too, that was handed to me. Brett Yasko also designed this He's book. He's the best. <laughs> Brett's the best. Um, and it's, it's about, uh, it's called The People Are the Late, and it's a project that I did in Homewood um, in 2017, I think. Of the look. Wow. The look in here. <laughs> it's like, I, yeah, I think it was 2017. And um, it was a project that I did with uh, 12, um, a lot of people, but 12 specifically, um, uh, 10 uh, women from, who were connected to Homewood in some way, um, and uh, that did workshops and different things all around the neighborhood and projects and art installations and performances and events and da 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 um all like in honoring like the black matriarch and um so made this book and the proceeds uh all the proceeds go to the organizations that um worked with us which was house of mana which is um uh in Homewood on, um, it's, it's a religious spiritual space, but it's also a space that feeds people and supports people who um, have been incarcerated or in the prison system. And it also is just like a really beautiful place. Um, and also goes to uh, Felicia Savage Friedman's Yoga Roots, which is a anti-racist yoga school. Um, and it goes to Lighthouse, um, which is a teen media program at the Homewood Y MCA, and um, one other organization that I'm uh, spacing on that I shouldn't be, but I'll think about it. It's 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 on the website. <laughs> 
But, um, oh, it was actually, no, that's not true. It was the Coliseum, but now the Coliseum is owned by different people. It was when um, the brewers owned the Coliseum, we were uh, put s splitting the proceeds and sending it to these four places, but now it's just the three. So, yeah. Thank you both so, so, so much. Thanks, Can yeah. we have some Thank applause you. for Thank these you. amazing Thank artists?